Watchbox Studios. This is On Point on Watchbox with Cynthia Hardy. Good morning. Welcome to On Point on Watchbox. It's always a pleasure to bring you the show every week, and we do want you to take the opportunity to tune into the radio show. On Point with Cynthia Hardy heard every Sunday evening, 6 p.m. on 101.3 The Big DM. Today on On Point on Watch, voting in South Carolina, a right or a privilege? South Carolina's voter ID legislation not taken effect yet, but the confusion is in full effect. September is Voter Education Month in South Carolina, and the state is currently in the middle of a court battle which could impact more than 170,000 residents' abilities to cast their ballots. Now, the high court is deciding whether South Carolina's new voter <coughs> ID legislation violates the Voting <coughs> Rights Act. Many voters are confused on what the law is or if it has or will take effect. Today, we're going to talk to the state's top voter educators to get answers on the situation. So today on On Point and Watch, voting in South Carolina. Uh, Brian McConkie joins us every week uh, for this discussion, which, Brian, this is extremely important. We are at the height of the political season right well, now, and everybody is paying attention. I would say so many people are engaged, but this whole issue about South Carolina's uh, law regarding yeah. voting is something that's causing a lot of confusion out there. And a lot of people think that it's already in place. Because we and call that, it that the voter the, ID yeah, law. Th and that when, when we go in, 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 in to the polls in November that we're going to have to abide by this, which is not the case at this point. It, it certainly is not. And, and this week, in fact, uh, a three uh, federal judge panel in Washington, D.C. will be taking up uh, this case. Again, it had, it had been on recess since earlier this month. There'll be some closing arguments in uh, testing the validity of this right. uh, and the legality of, of this particular law that was signed into <coughs> law in this state but cannot take effect until it gets that federal approval. Right, and so that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We want to go step by step to give people a synopsis, and I think this is a good opportunity to then pitch over uh, to Lynn Teague with the League of Women Voters for South Carolina, and thank you so much for being with us thank as you. well, Lillian McBride. You. Uh, you are, in the name of your office again, it's the Board of uh, Elections and Voter Registration for Richland County. It used to be called the Election Commission. Yes. <laughs> but it's a new title right. now. Right. <laughs> uh, let's go through the synopsis of what's actually going on. South Carolina's legislature actually passed uh, a voter photo ID law. It was a bill. They made okay. it law. The Justice Department uh, in December, late December, said it, would, it violated the Voting Rights Act and therefore it was unconstitutional and South Carolina could not move forward and enforce that law. Then our governor and our attorney general sued the Department of, of Justice to say we want to enforce the law anyway. Therein lies the rub because it's being decided right now and some are fearing the decision may come between now and November 6, which is Election Day, which could really throw everything topsy-turvy. Right. And we're telling the voters to make sure they have all their credentials in place, making sure they register to vote by October 6. If they need to do a change of address, make sure their address is changed. And also, if they, if they misplace or lost their voter registration office, they can call their voter registration office and have that replaced. So if something does come into effect, they'll be ready. And if it does come in effect, um, from what we were told from the State Election Commission, they'll put the equipment in our office where we can take those pictures of the individual who needs that ID on their voter registration card. Do you worry, though, that uh, just all this talk about if it does, if it doesn't, is causing the same effect of actually suppressing <coughs> the effort, uh, people being hesitant to move forward because they're not quite sure what's happening. They could stay home, happening. potentially. Uh, do you field a lot of phone calls from people, both of you, with, with concerns about this, asking whether it actually is reality at this point? I've gotten that yeah. question a great deal. I've been speaking to groups across the, the state, and uh, we hear that question a lot. And what we tell people is that some of the very same things we would tell them in any case are the best courses to make sure, as you were saying, that they're registered, because if they're registered, that's the basic, and they may then, if something changes, be in a better position. Um, also, many people are eligible to vote by absentee ballot, mm -hmm. and we encourage people who are eligible to vote by absentee ballot if they think they're going to have any problem getting to the polls, and of course, this includes everyone over 65, and those would be a lot of the people who might have trouble if this went into effect, uh, are el you know, they're eligible for the absentee ballot and that ends that problem. Well, still, as Brian was indicating, just the confusion itself seems as if it might just have the effect of, of people, people saying, well, gosh, I just don't know, so 
I just won't do anything. I don't want them to do that. But it just feels as if, um, for one thing, we hear people talk about South Carolina's new voter photo ID law. The law was passed, but it cannot be enforced. Right. And it cannot be enforced because the Department of Justice says it's illegal. Right. Then our state sues to say, uh uh, it's not illegal. We believe it is legal. So that's what's happening right now. Right. But the casual observer out there it could very well be saying, huh? <laughs> yeah, and they'll get confused. So we're asking them just to put yourself in position. And as of now, that we know as far as all the state, you know, the voter registration office across the state, everything is as is now. You only need three other credentials when you go to vote, and that's your voter registration card or a South Carolina driver's license or a South Carolina ID. It's one or the other, not all three. Now say it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's your voter registration card. Okay, everybody or, has a little blue card. <laughs> yes, yep. or a South Carolina ID, which is showing your address where you live at. Which could or, be my license. Right. Or if I don't drive, just a plain old ID. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are the three as of now. Okay. okay. All right. All right. And so the calls that you're getting to, what about young voters and what about first time voters? What are you telling them? Well, the first time voters, first of all, we really encourage them to vote because young people do not vote in the numbers we'd like to see. No, South Carolina in general does not have the turnout that we would like to see for voting. And this is one of our concerns about anything that would tend to reduce the number of people who are out there. But for young people, uh, I did a voter registration at Columbia College mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. and a lot of the questions that we got were just about you know, absentee voting, if sure. they chose to uh, continue to vote in their hometown. Sure. Because um, many of them had heard that they can't vote, right? And that's not true, right? And so we, uh, it was a very good occasion. Uh, Jim Rex was there, encouraging everybody to register. And uh, most of the questions that we got were simply around how to handle student issues with residents. Well, let's go koalas. Mm -hmm. I'm a koala. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> There's my ring. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, but it's good to see those women being so engaged and so right. informed. I want to say um, good job to the South Carolina League of Women Voters for doing everything that you can yes. in a nonpartisan mm -hmm. way to try to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to exercise that very democratic, basic tenant of right. the democracy, <laughs> which is the vote. And thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, come yeah. back, and when we come back, Brian, we're going to have some more conversation about ways to clear up confusion some of the Plenty things of that are actually uh, doing, uh, going on. We're going to add the Palmetto Project to this okay. discussion, so you guys take tuned. Watching On Point on Watchbox with Cynthia Hardy on Columbia's own Watchbox. Welcome back to On Point on Watchbox. Brian McConkie and I today are talking about voting in South Carolina. We asked the question, is it a right or a privilege? Kind of joking around a little bit, but, but some people may, may have a debate about that that's or have right. some confusion about that just based on a lot of the political wrangling that's been going on for the past, the better part of a year, that's really, right. and maybe a little longer than that. In fact, all revolving around the... Uh, the controversy around the voter ID law, That's which right. was signed into law, right. but is not in effect. No. So we've got to clear that up. But we're <laughs> expecting that there may be yeah. a ruling between yeah, now there could be. There and could the next be. couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Even though there are a number of people that are predicting even if there is a ruling, it's not going to impact yeah, us. It won't but I think professionals like Lillian McBride and Steve Scarden are very interested in what's uh, mm -hmm. what's transpiring because you guys are responsible for actually informing the public. Of course, Steve with the Palmetto Project and Lillian right. with the uh, Board of Elections and voter registration, formerly the Election Commission <laughs> in Richland County. Right. Um, it, it is a little bit confusing out there, and we have injected you, Mr. Scar, into the conversation. Can you address the confusion and what you're doing at the Palmetto Project to help alleviate it? And thank you for driving from Charleston to be with us here in <laughs> Columbia. We, yeah, we, we don't take that lightly, Brian and <laughs> no, I. No, we don't. don't. Um, the, the big question out there in voters' minds is what do they have to do differently this time than they did last time? And the answer is nothing. You go to vote just like you normally did. Um, as you mentioned, Cynthia, there is a pending court case. There may or may not be a ruling in that case. But right now, all you have to do is exactly what you've done before. Go to the, go to the polls on Election Day, bring some form of identification, preferably uh, your uh, uh, voter registration card. Uh, you can use your driver's license if you want to, but you're not required to produce a photo ID. A lot of people do think that they will yeah. be required to do right. that. And getting that word out there is really important. How important is it, Lillian? It's really important. You know, in our office, we have, we have a voter outreach person that we have go around the different organization talking with them and letting them know exactly what they need on Election Day or if they have any questions or anything that they need to contact their voter registration office with any questions. 
Yeah. You guys covering a lot of voter registration drives and stuff? As of right now, no, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming probably in the next week and a half, mm -hmm. as we get closer to that one month deadline, October right. 6th, we probably will see more and more of this. And it's important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And, and I'm sure that uh, you've got a lot of efforts going on to make sure people do have everything in place because you don't want someone to show up thinking they're registered either. <laughs> oh, exactly. and, and, and they're not, and, and exactly. you have to turn them away because exactly. that, that would be an issue as well. So as we get closer and closer to that November 6th date, what are some of the efforts looking like on your end to make sure that everyone does have all the, the, the T's crossed, the I's dotted, so to speak? Well, Ms. McBride mentioned that uh, changing your address if you've moved is very important. Yes. A lot of people will say, well, you know, I was living in Columbia two years ago and I voted, but then I moved across town, so I'm still in mm -hmm. Columbia doesn't count. You've got to notify the, the Board of Election in your county uh, if you've moved and, and changed your address um, so that, that when you, you show up to vote, you're not, your name is going to be on the, the correct list. You know, there's been talk, too, about poll watchers on the day of election and people challenging people's ability <coughs> to vote. Are you guys uh, part of uh, what's gearing up to try to make voters feel comfortable? I don't want anybody following me around at the polling place. You say what to that, Ms. McBride? I say to that because we instruct our poll workers, the clerk, if, if they're disturbing the uh, voting process, they need to let us know and they need to leave because they cannot disturb the voting process. Because I've seen people, you know, I've been in line and I've seen people challenge someone else's ability to vote based on the identification that they've provided. Now, that was at my polling precinct in my own neighborhood in 2008. But I did witness it. Did witness it. And I don't think that that is uncommon on Election Day because the stakes are really high. Right. Yes. It's been a lot more common in the past. Uh, fortunately, we've, we've seen a decline in that kind of activity where, where you're being harassed as a, uh, because you're voting. But it, it's very real and it's allowed in South Carolina. So if that happens to you, you've got to get all the information, find out who it is who's challenging you, um, and then talk to the precinct manager to make sure that, that your vote is going to be counted. And, and if it's challenged, you've got to find out how you uh, deal with that challenge. It doesn't happen much, but it does happen. I'm wondering if organizations like yours were ready for this, because in 2008, this wasn't something that uh, there was a lot of talk mm -hmm. about, but, but now uh, every, all eyes are on the voting process, uh, particularly in southern states where the turnout was really, really high, uncharacteristically so, uh, in 2008. And so there's a lot of efforts underway now to pay attention to sure. that. Uh, I guess you guys had to kind of double up on some of the resources that you have to expend as well. Well, we are. We're, I'm a nonprofit. The Palmetto Project is a nonprofit, and, and consequently, uh, we don't like spending money fixing things that didn't need, that weren't broken in the first place. And uh, the, the big problem with this law for many people is that there was, there's no evidence that there's been voter fraud in South Carolina. So this has sort of been a solution in search of a problem to fix. Uh, it was uh, brought to my attention that as much as $1.5 million is actually being spent by the South Carolina General Assembly or the state in general to address this issue of, of voter fraud or preventing voter fraud in South Carolina. And that sounds like a big old number. And I know that you work for the system, the public <laughs> sector, that might put you in a little bit of a different kind of a situation, Ms. McBride. You got any comment on that? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> should be quiet on this one, I think. I'll plead well, the Should just answer this. the questions when they call. There That's you go. right. And I think everybody understands that. Any final comment from you, Ms. McBride? We do appreciate you being with us, but uh, I know that you are headed back down to your office in just a little bit to uh, take care of some things. But any final comment before you One thing to remind the voters, too, we had reapportionment this year so a lot of them may not know that their no. districts change to them to make sure they contact their voter registration office to find out what their districts are. Well great <laughs> and uh, we appreciate your being with us for these two segments. Steve's going to stick around we're going to add mm -hmm. Dr. Lonnie Randolph president of the South Carolina Conference right. of Branches of the NAACP. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm. And Jim Felder comes later so you guys stay <laughs> tuned okay. You're watching On Point on Watchbox with Cynthia Hardy on Columbia's own Watchbox. Welcome back to On Point on Watchbox. Brian McConkey and I are talking about voting in South Carolina. It's the and season. We're, we're, right or privilege? We're coming right up on it. Oh, so, man. Uh, and, and October 6th, of course, is the deadline. You have to be registered to vote if you want to have any chance <laughs> at November 6th. There's not going to be any questions asked then. But we're talking about primarily voter ID today. Mm -hmm. And we've had a good discussion the past mm -hmm. two segments, just answering some questions about the realities of it and what, what's true, what isn't true, and what people really need to know. Steve Scarden has joined us 
from the Palmetto Project, and now we introduce uh, Dr. Lonnie Randolph from South Carolina NAACP as well to uh, talk about this issue um, as well. You've, you've heard what we've been talking about, uh, about some of the confusion out there. Uh, Dr. Randolph, if, if you can speak to this a little bit, you, you probably field a lot of phone calls about this, hear from people face to face about what's going to happen on November 6th. Am I going to be able to vote? Um, everything you said is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we tell folks to uh, rely upon their vigilance, their commitment to democracy, and perseverance. The truth of the matter, these are trivial issues because we've been through far worse issues. And the earlier things that we endured, like literacy tests, poll taxes, are just being denied the right to vote based on, remember, women just got the right to vote in this country by an amendment in 1920. White women. And this same democracy that what, 236 years old now, that we salute the flag and lay our hand on our chest and sing all these emotional songs. And God, songs. we trust all that? I don't care who they trust in, trust in treating people right. Yeah. And America and South Carolina has not established a policy of treating all human beings fair and, and, and equitable treatment. You know, it's just insane to see this, but those of us who consider ourselves advocates for justice for all people, we enjoy it because it gives me something to do. <laughs> Check you out, Doc. <laughs> Check you out. Uh, in the previous segment, uh, Mrs. Garden talked about a uh, problem in search of uh, a solution in search of a problem. I, I spoke to uh, my friend Jim Felt. I said, now that's a good one. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> statement because that's what it is. He mentioned how, um, he also mentioned how small this problem really is. The state that has had the highest incidence of voter fraud is Ohio. Point zero 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 four percent Man, wonder what would happen if we would address health care issues in the state with a fraction like that, a percentage like that. Wonder what would happen if we would adjust the salary disparities. Don't dare mention education. Every child in the state would have an opportunity to a fair and just education in the state. Let's be real. The biggest problem though in this issue is uh, the problem is citizens because if the community would get involved and I think most of the people in this state are fair and decent people. If they would ever get involved and say that they are not going to tolerate it, tolerate apathy from voters is one thing. But then you turn right around and that same apathetic attitude goes to elected officials. Um, I can't think of the, the, the writer who said that bad officials are elected. George Jean Nathan okay. is the okay. author of the quote, bad officials are elected by good citizens who do not vote. If good citizens would participate in this process, for everybody to have an opportunity, that's all we're fighting for. Sure. Steve, an equal you, opportunity. Steve, in, in your viewpoint, how do you get more people involved? How do you get more people out to the ballot box? I mean, well, because the, the numbers aren't what we want them to be. There, South Carolina has uh, a hidden um, <laughs> secret in the last 10 years. We have, we have increased voter turnout in South mm -hmm. Carolina uh, faster than all but, but two other states. Alaska, by the way, is, has been beating us. So our electorate has been growing very rapidly. Uh, the Palmetto Project uh, puts out those I Voted yeah. stickers, and so I'm very keenly aware of how many I Voted yeah, stickers we up. have to have every <laughs> year. But uh, our state is really on the move. Okay. And we've got young people now who are, I don't know what has suddenly woken them up, but uh, we have a lot of young people registering to vote. They, by the way, can become precinct managers, uh, poll managers uh, at age 18, and, and, and that's a, a great opportunity for young people not only to get involved in the system, but actually work the system and make it, make it work for the state. As we wrap up this segment, if you have an email address, uh, not an email address, a website, uh, or uh, a contact, any contact information that you'd like to offer to our viewers, because I'm sure people would like to volunteer with you and find out how they can do more. Sure, they can volunteer through us or call their county election commissions. Our website is www.palmettoproject, all one word, mm -hmm. dot org. Well, you guys have Easy done enough. tremendous work. Uh, 
since the early 90s and I remember when you guys got started and uh, how you put a face and, uh, and a brand on the effort to vote in sure. South Carolina, something that all citizens can rally behind. So sure. congratulations for that and thank, thank you for you. being with us. Dr. Randolph, will you stick around? We're going to bring Jim Felder on to wrap up the show with you. Can you please give me an opportunity to give the NAACP's website and you phone number it. before we it. leave you the air. <laughs> you will certainly have So it. that our 103 years in this country can continue. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. You guys will be back. You're watching On Point on Watchbox with Cynthia Hardy on Columbia's own Watchbox. Welcome back to On Point on Watchbox. Brian McConkey and I are wrapping up the show now. We've got Dr. Lonnie Randolph, yep. who's president of the South Carolina Conference of Branches of the NAACP. Jim Felder, who is here with the South Carolina Voter Education Project, got just five more minutes left. Before we went to break, Dr. Randolph said, you better let me be <laughs> And we will. We'll, we'll save about 30 <laughs> seconds for him to get the website in. But we, we see a lot of Mr. Felder because we, we do address this issue of the voter Absolutely. ID confusion. He, he does give us a lot of his time on this program because those questions still remain no matter how many times we, we have you on. They're still out there. Still. And, and you're dealing with, both of you, everybody, all of us are dealing with these questions on a, on a daily, weekly basis. And is it getting any better? Is, is the... Uh, is the uh, I guess, comprehension of what's going on getting clearer for people? We're beginning to get more calls now yeah. about little things. As we get closer. As yeah. we get closer. Now they're calling about changing the registration, mm -hmm. early voting, can I do absentee ballot, mm -hmm. which way do I do it, do I yeah. walk in or send the application in? So finally the public is beginning to focus a little bit more on this now. Mm -hmm. I've been working the state, the AME crowd I call it, mm -hmm. you know there are six conferences they do and it's, each conference is a week long. On Thursday nights they give me the opportunity to address the layman. But I'm still surprised about the number of people who still think the voter ID thing is law. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the first thing I have to address everywhere I go. No, it's not the law. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. But the attention is now beginning to focus on this election. Dr. Randolph, the NAACP is all over the state working mm -hmm. this effort. Can you talk to us about that? And this would be a really good time to tell people uh, about the NAACP's involvement and what you want from us as a community. Well, again, uh, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And um, we're nonpartisan, and we do this to ensure that uh, regardless of your zip code, regardless of who your mama, your daddy, your grandparents are, we want you to enjoy uh, the niceties of this country and make it the supposedly great country that it claims to be. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to ensure that all citizens have uh, a fair and equal opportunity to the things that uh, this country offers. And um, I want to applaud your guests earlier. Steve for Scarden and they, all of Lynn them Teague were and awesome. Lillian and Clay. All, all yes. of them were yes. awesome individuals. Mm -hmm. um, the League of Women Voters has been just a great partner for the NAACP, the Palmetto Project. And Ms. McBride is just one of, if not the best you'll find in the country, in the state, she is definitely the best in the country. Got you now. <laughs> uh, and, and I say that, and I also have to say I want to applaud the station, mm -hmm. because there are stations that won't touch this topic right. uh, for whatever reasons, and knowledge is still power, and I want to appreciate you for doing that. The NAACP, um, as I stated earlier, all issues of equity and fairness for all human beings is what we push for what we fought, fight for. And uh, we have uh, reached out to all of our partners in the state and around the country to assist us. One of the things that I would like to say, Jim, and I know I've heard Jim say it also at many of the speaking engagements I've heard him, uh, groups I've heard him speak to, this is not the most important election in this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to stop that lie. Mm -hmm. This is the a great and important election, as they all should be. And we need to develop that attitude as a community that anytime you give someone the right to alter what you do and you don't participate in what they say or what they do, then um, uh, Thomas Paine, a Revolutionary War philosopher, said that to control, to not allow a person to think is another way of supporting slavery. And we can understand now why <laughs> all of these states, 72% of the states that have passed voter ID laws are the southern states. Mm. Cotton ain't growing anymore, is it? How about you? 72%. 38% of those states are states outside of the south that have passed voter ID laws. You know, the argument, I understand what they're saying, but what they're saying is not true 
is strictly voter suppression, and voter suppression has been in existence in America. George Washington was elected in 1787. They had voter suppression then. That's going to have we're to be try, the last We're trying to get that website voter up. Suppression. <laughs> Our website is scnaacp at bellsouth.net, 803-754-4584. And thank you again for giving right us then. this opportunity. Sure. And yeah. you've got Reverend Al coming on Tuesday. On Tuesday, Reverend Al will be in town. We'll be doing a voter registration at the Wellness Center for students at Allen and Benedict. And then in the evening, we'll be at Greater St. Luke. He'll be here all day next Tuesday. So a lot of activity will be yeah, going on. Before we'll October the 6th. That's it for this edition of On Point on Watch Fox. Send your comments and suggestions to onpointmississippi.com. Go to the Facebook page. Leave your comments there and follow us on Twitter at Radio Talk. Like us on Facebook. Brian and I believe when you're informed, you're empowered. Once empowered, you're on point. We're going to see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.